heart the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god and sinners reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim christ is born in bethlehem hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king hail the heaven-born prince of peace hail the son of righteousness light and life to all he brings risen with healing in his wings mild he lays his glory by born that man no more may die born to raise the sons of earth born to give them second birth hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king king of heaven come down king of heaven come now let your glory ring shining like the day king of heaven come king of heaven rise up who can stand against us you are strong to save in your mighty name king of heaven come by highest heaven adored christ the everlasting lord late in time behold him come offsprings of a virgin's womb mild he lays his glory by born that man no more may die born to raise the sons of earth born to give them second birth hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king king of heaven come down king of heaven come now let your glory reign shining like the day king of heaven come king of heaven come down king of heaven come now let your glory reign shining like the day king of heaven come king of heaven the day king of heaven come oh holy night the stars are brightly shining it is a night 
of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt his worth. A thrill of hope The weary world rejoices For yonder breaks A new and glorious morn Fall on your knees O oh, he
Well, good morning, uh, Mile High Calvary, and Merry Christmas. I hope that you guys have a, had a blessed morning this morning as you get to hang out with your family, get to open presents, get to um, fellowship together. Um, we wanted to do something a little bit special today for Christmas uh, Day service. I know that we had our Christmas Eve services last night, but today and on Christmas Day, we wanted to spend some time together um, in Bethlehem as we get to remember the events of what took place over 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born. And so today we're going to be looking at a little section of scripture when we think about Bethlehem and the city of Bethlehem and, and think about the place where Jesus uh, would ultimately be born. There's just this amazing story in Luke chapter 2. And in Luke chapter 2, we're told the story of, of these shepherds that receive the call, that receive the information that the Messiah is born, that the Savior of the world is born. And, and as we get to stand here today um, in Bethlehem, overlooking Bethlehem this way, and overlooking these fields and, and this area where these shepherds would have hung out, you get to get a real sense and a real picture of, of what is happening, what is taking place in that moment. You get to see these olive trees where most likely many shepherds over the course of hundreds of years have spent many nights uh, taking care of the sheep, taking care of the flock. And so in Luke chapter 2, if you would turn with me, if you guys have your Bibles um, in your living rooms this morning, you can turn in Luke chapter 2, starting off in verse 8, as we get to read the story of the events that took place. In Luke chapter 2, verse 8, it starts by saying this, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there will be born to you this day in the city of David, who is the Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Now let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and was told to them. I want you guys to think about that night, that evening. For those shepherds, it was just another night. It was just a, a, another night, a, another night shift for them, taking care of the sheep. And, and what we can learn from these shepherds and, and their encounter with this angel and the chorus of heaven over 2,000 Christmases ago is, well, by the very nature of their work, shepherds weren't really um, viewed in high esteem. You know, these were, these were blue-collar guys. These were guys that hung out in the wilderness. These were guys that took care of the sheep. They probably smelt like campfire because they, they were um, always out there in the wilderness. And, and, of course, we know that there were great men of God like Abraham and David who um, were shepherds. Moses, uh, for a time and a season, was a shepherd. But, you know, most shepherds were not allowed to enter into the city, enter into the temple because they were deemed unclean. Because they were always hanging out with the sheep, always wanting to take care of the flock. And, and so when God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world, God communicated not with the higher ups of the world, of course, we know that Mary and Joseph knew that Jesus was going to be the Messiah, but one of the first groups of people God desires, uh, God chooses to speak to first and foremost, was a group of shepherds. Now, 
this is amazing to me because if you know the, the Bible and you know the Gospels and you know the Old Testament, the last book of the Bible is the book of Malachi. And from the book of Malachi to the Gospels is a 400 years of silence. 400 years of, of God not speaking. And it's all of a sudden in that moment, in that night, that evening, that, that God chooses to speak to a group of shepherds. After 400 years of silence, God chooses to speak to a group of shepherds. And, and he chooses a, an angel to communicate to them that this day, the Messiah the, the Savior of the world was going to be born. He chose to speak to them, not to Caesar, not to the most powerful people in the world, not to the high priest, but to shepherds. Now, if you look at this, I mean, this is just a, a, an amazing scene because this is actually a fulfillment of a prophecy. 700 years earlier, in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, it says this, it says, but Bethlehem, though you are small among the thousands of Judah, yet from you shall come to me the one to be the ruler of Israel, whose going forth are from old and from everlasting. When we think about that, that 700 years earlier was predicted that in this very city, that the Messiah, the Savior of the world, was going to be born. And then from there, 700 years later, God speaks to a group of shepherds to show them that this Messiah has now arrived. You know, with, with all of this going on, you know, in that, that hillside, you know, they marveled, they, they were shocked, and then all of a sudden this chorus breaks out, glory to God in the highest. And from there, they decide to make their way into the city to, to find this uh, Messiah, this Savior that was going to um, take care of the world. You know, I, I think about the thought line of shepherds taking care of sheep and, and the very same idea that the shepherd, the good shepherd, was being born to take care of ultimately his sheep. And of course, we all know that sheep are not smart animals. Sheep are dumb. They're foolish. They lead other sheep astray. They're really just sweaters with hooves. You know, they just really don't do anything great. And yet, these shepherds would take care of their sheep in the same way that God would take care of his own children. That Jesus would be the good shepherd that you need in every part of your life. And and so I, I, I want you to think about as they made their way, the census was going on. There was a a census to count all the people. That's the reason why Mary and Joseph were in this land, um, Joseph's homeland. And, and what we see in that is, is ultimately God had predestined that this would be the moment, that this would be the time. And as the city is bustling and things are crazy, how would these shepherds find uh, this child, the good shepherd? Well, he told them that he would be wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. Now, I mean, this, 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 with a city bustling and all kinds of people around, just think about that. That's like trying to find a uh, parking spot at Park Meadows yesterday or two days ago. It, it's not going to happen. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be impossible. But yet, there was something significant. He would be born in a manger. Not in a crib, not in a palace, but in something that was just, you know, there, this piece of stone. Um, this baby laying there. And yet, it was this very personal reason why God would choose Jesus to be born that way. Not in a lofty palace that w w he was unreachable, but in a place where he was accessible. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 says, Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ was Lord, that he would be willing to come as a as a gift for all of mankind. And that he would be the good shepherd that the world actually needed at that time. That he would ultimately die for the sheep. And so when the angels appeared to the shepherds that night on the hillside and the shepherds um, faced a choice, would they ignore the, the call of, of 
the glad tidings or would they go searching for this child? And of course we know the story. They went searching for him and they found him. When the angels worked and, and moved, there was something that stirred within the shepherd's hearts. The shepherd went in search of this little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and, and they went and they, they found him and they worshiped him. And it tells us in Luke chapter 2 that, that when the shepherds explained this to all the people around, that, that the people marveled. Why? Well, because these were blue-collar guys. These were not theologians. These were not like men that had been studied in the Word or in the Torah. These were guys that just simply heard the message, went and found the Savior, and then repeated the message to the world around them. And they found the child in swaddling clothes in a manger. You know, I think about that that moment and, and just maybe for some of us this morning in, in the hubbub and the craziness of Christmas, we lost fact or lost sight of the fact that a Savior was born. You know, maybe we've been trying to find the perfect gift and we think like, oh, if, if we can just have the perfect gift, then, then things would be great this Christmas. If only he goes to Jared, then things would be great this Christmas. If... if and the reality is, is we will never find peace and fulfillment in the things of this world. We will only find it when we find that child in a manger. When we find that child who would grow up to be a man, who would grow, go to the cross and die on the cross for our sins so that we can have eternal life. And so as we think about the events of the, the shepherds, as we think about the good shepherd coming to this earth, as we think about Christmas and what it's all about, it's not about... Um, the, the things of this world, it's, it's about the child in a manger who came to save the sheep, to protect the sheep, to give eternal life to the sheep. And so maybe for some of us this morning, you know, as we've maybe lost sight of that, or maybe we feel like we're in a dark place, it's, at, it's nighttime, it's, it's dark outside, um, we, we don't see the light around us. Maybe this is the moment that God wants to reveal himself to you. That after 400 years of, of silence, that maybe God wants to speak to you right here, right now. That, that maybe you've been distant from him the last few months. That maybe right here, right now, God wants to speak to you. And Christmas Day is a great day to always reflect on your spiritual walk and where you're at with Jesus. Is he your good shepherd? Are you searching for him? Will you find him? Yes, you will, the Bible tells us, if you look with him, look for him with all your heart. And so as we close out our time together this morning, I pray that you would maybe spend a few minutes praying with your family, being thankful, yes, for the gifts that, that have been provided, but more importantly, for the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. And so if you would, let's pray. Let's close out our time. And um, may the Lord bless you. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this day that you sent the good shepherd, that you spoke to a bunch of shepherds and proclaimed that the good shepherd had been born so that we can have eternal life. And so today on Christmas Day, we reflect on what it is you want to do in our hearts and in our lives. We worship you this morning. May our day go well. May we spend time with friends and family. May we enjoy the gifts, but more importantly, may we enjoy our relationship with you, dear Jesus. And if we're far away or if things seem dark and bleak, I pray, dear Lord, that you would reveal yourself so that we can sing as, as the angels did glory to God in the highest. We love you, Lord. We're grateful for Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that the Lord would bless you today, that the Lord would keep you today, and that you would have a great and amazing Christmas.